Isn't it funny how every Land Rover that comes in here that's got bull bars, diff locks, brule cages, rock sliders and all the paraphernalia for going off-road and yet the linkages are all seized up for the diff lock and the high and low. So what I'm going to do, and this is just a bit of an intro, I'm going to show you problems I had with the linkages and I'm also going to do again the shifter because this one's seized up. Let's get on to it. One of the things with Land Rovers is they, because they're sort of a roughy toughy vehicle, they get neglected quite a lot because they keep going. One of the things that gets rarely selected in most vehicles is this bit, the uh, linkage for the high and low shift. Now, uh, this is off the uh, Naspec 90, and these linkages are really, really tight. I mean, this one here just won't move at all. Oh, there it is, it just moved. But it's so stiff, what it's done is, when I was checking this out, I thought, oh yeah, it's moving. But I was a bit suspicious of it, and I took it off. You see, although I'm holding this, this is moving. So that's come loose in here, so we've got to tighten that up and take these pins out and clean them up. And that's all it is, it's just cleaning up, but when we put them on we cover them with grease. We really grease all these lot up. Uh, one thing I little wanted, wanted to show you is, when I took this off this car, I got, just got a little slitting disc and slit down the side of the end of the shaft that goes through your, you know, your little high-low diff lock thing. And uh, so I've got a mark on here, so I can put the spline back on in the right place. Makes life a lot easier. So all I'm going to do is put these on the vise, punch them through, and then uh, clean up the bushes and the pins. Clean them in the, just a the wire brush, actually. I wonder if we could do it now. No, we can't. <laughs> I haven't got a punch. Just wait a minute. Let's start with this one. Because uh, then that will free off that linkage. We'll just tap it down a little bit first. There we go. Then we'll get the punch. And with a bit of luck that pin will fall on the floor. Oh, will it? You can see how rusty that pin is. And it come out. There we go. Now inside of here, there's two little nylon bushes. There's one. And there's the other. So they're not too bad. I'm just going to give those a light wire brush when I can find my wire brush. I'm, I'm so confused with parts at the moment. And this one's exactly the same here. But well, we've got to take this little uh, location, this, this locking clip off here. Now that's pretty rusty. I don't know if it's going to come out. And... Oh, it'll move with a pair of pliers. Let me go and get some of those. Before I uh, start to do anything on putting these pins and bushes back in, I thought we'd have a look at this loose lever here. Oh. <laughs> It is quite loose. <laughs> it's supposed to be loctited in. Yeah, that's not good. So this gives us an opportunity to do another little oil leak that cough often found on Land Rovers. Um, there's an O-ring here. So we're going to pop a new O-ring on there because they feel almost flat and uh, I have known them splash out and leak down the sides. Uh, of the gearbox of the transfer case and it makes it look like it's an oil seal leaking but it isn't it's only that so let me uh, pull this off and make note of which way this goes round the flat bit the straight flat bit goes to the back all right so leave take it off and leave it like that look oh that's a bit nasty but it's come off uh, let's get an o-ring so I put a new o-ring on the shaft that's going to be nice the next thing we're going to use our brake cleaner 
we're going to clean out any oil residue off that thing, whatever it's called, the little leverette, and also off the grub screw. Because, as we mentioned before, you cannot put um, thread locker on oil. So I've got the, uh, the arm assembled, the linkage. A couple of little drops of uh, thread locker, or even just one lock in this case, because we are from Yorkshire, we don't want to waste this, it's very expensive. Let it run around the thread a little bit, look. And then, we can tighten that up. I don't know whether it's stiff or not in the hole. Ooh. Oh, there you go. And just give it a good old nipping up, because you don't want that to come out. I mean, don't come out, I mean, the socket should come out. <laughs> I think the side wall of the socket, the side wall of the socket's jamming on here. Anyway, that's out. Ah, that's nice and tight. Now look at that's tight. Tight as a tiger. That. See, the thing is, just a little bit of play in here will make an awful a lot of exaggeration on the lever when you work out all the uh, the gearage on the linkages. So now we've given this a. A good old wire brushing and you know, get in there. I give it a wire brush on the uh, the grinder, but just to get some stuff out the middle. And then we'll put this in like this, as it should go on the gearbox on the transfer case. And then we shall put the linkage on as it went on the transfer case. So I've just set up the lever and the linkage on here. I'm going to put some uh, some grease on these bushings where the bushings go. On there, there's one in there like that. One in there like that. And then some grease on the inside of here. The pin went through the wire brush on the grinder, came up lovely. Again, can't put enough grease on. And the grease I actually use for doing jobs like this is the tail end of the grease tub because it doesn't really matter if it gets dirty because there's nothing, there's no bearings or anything in there. And then we'll put the pin through like that. New clip. Let me get my hands on it. I should tap on, but. There we go. Is that on? That's on. Lovely jubbly. And that is now all free as a bird. And that's how it should be. Look at that. So, the next one, going to do exactly the same for this one. But we're going to know which is the outside and which is the inside. Like I say, I did mark up on here a little mark so I know that this face is towards the um, the door, if you see what I mean. So I, I won't show you this, but I'll show you when it's finished. I put this through the parts washer because it was a bit black. And it works this way, but it don't move that way. All right, and let's have a look and see how it works. Well, you can see there's a, there's a pivot here. All right, there's the pivoty bit. But this bit won't move. And what that means is it's not moving. So it, although it moves, this shaft radially, it won't move it axially back and forward. And that's usually it's seized up in here or a bit tight. So what I think we'll do with this one is we'll strip it down completely because I did one before but it had a sort of a, how do we say, a detent in here. Well this is the sort of later type and as you can see there's no detent spring in here so well might as well get value for money and do it twice. So let's uh, 
somehow put this in the vise. I don't know how we're going to do it because it's offset. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do is take the cover off. Now I won't film that because it's kind of easy, but I'm just going to use a little ratchet spanner and pull this cover off. It's kind of ironic since I started, since I put this in the parts washer, the lever now moves. But I'm going to take it apart anyway, just in case. And those screws are very tight because they're countersunk. All right. The taper holds them in. So what we do is we simply give them a bit of a bang, and I use a spanner on the screwdriver shaft and hopefully ooh, that's not going to come out so we're going to have to do something a bit more drastic give that a bit of a beating I've knocked a bit of the corner off there but oh, it doesn't really matter Right, let's see if this is going to come out after a bit of a tap. Yes. Now, the next thing is, I want to get this cover off here, which we need our famous, our world famous, uh, scraper. But we haven't got it, I've got to go and find it. Of course, naturally, I can't find my world famous scraper, so I've got another one. Or pry bar, should I say? These are quite tricky to get out because there's not much meat to get underneath. There we go. There. There's an o-ring inside here, but there's nothing right at the end, and this is the piece that usually gets seized up. So I've got that out of the way. Next thing. Now I'm just sort of nipping this in the vise, I'm not actually tightening it up. We'll get that clip off here, drop that down there. Push the pin through. Pin. Now that dropped down, and then because this is a straight lever, we should be able to. Oh, there's the bush. Now don't, don't lose these like I just did. These come out of here. They're the same bush that's on all the linkages on Land Rovers. So it doesn't matter which one it is, it's all the same, so we get some of those pieces in. Really handy. Now, oh I see. I'm just going to get a bit of, uh, bit of sandpaper and uh, sand that shaft down a bit. A couple of high spots on it. Because that should push through, through that to... Uh, Oh, it's not going to lose it. A bit more sanding. I don't want to take the paint off it. And I don't think it's I don't think it's bent, it's just got a bit to uh, if it doesn't well it doesn't matter. So, shaft out. Some of them have got a bend in, which makes it really interesting. So then what you've got to do is take off this little circlip under here, which has got a ball in, and then you can take it out from this way. But uh, I don't think we'll bother with that on this, this instance. And now, as you can see, when you push this shaft through, everything will come out. Like that. Easy, isn't it? So now what we've got to do find some that's somewhere relatively clean. And you can see the rust on the shaft. 
this one's not so bad so I'm going to go across to the bench uh, wire brush and polish that up so once you've got everything clean just give it a good inspection make sure there's no rust in here or corrosion in here that's one of the important things there's the shaft after it's gone through the wire brush looks like new doesn't it so what I'm going to do now is start to lube things up no no I'm not I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to show you something so this is the part, the corresponding part, that goes on the outside of your gearbox that goes to your high and low shift. You can notice how many O-rings there are. There's one on the inside and two on the shaft and then another one on the inside. Now when you put the, the uh, shaft through the hole, you can feel resistance. So therefore, for me, there's no point replacing that O-ring. Why? Well, generally speaking, it's to stop water getting in and grease getting out which is highly unlikely and the same goes for the other end you'll see there's an o-ring on the outside push the shaft through if you get a resistance then the o-ring's okay honestly it's not a pressure thing it's nothing to do with that um, and also we're going to make sure that they're going to go nice and fit nice nice fit inside these housings which that one is look that's nice and also, in fact, get it out. This is going to fit in here really nice. Oops, well, I put it through the right way around. So that's going to be a, a nice fit in there. It's going to be tight on that o ring, but um, it's going to go in quite nice. All right, so let's start to assemble this up. And what we're going to do first of all is get some grease and grease around this little ball thing in here. Give it a good old greasing up. Make sure it's all nice and move it really nice. And then we can assemble some of these parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some grease on the on the shaft and also on the inside of that Aperture there, put plenty of grease in, make sure it moves really nice. Now we can put this back together. So let's get some grease on the outside of here, remembering which way it goes round. So put that through there first, if it will. Wait a minute, have I got that right? Yeah. No, I've got it wrong way around. <laughs> that's, that's what you get with looking at cameras. So put it like that, and then through there. And then we're going to sort of like push that into there. It's a bit tight because of the O-rings. I'm just going to tap it down. Now, I, I just tapped it down with a, with a hammer and a little punch, and it didn't take much getting in. So that's good. Now we have to remember which way this little ball goes. This ball went the other way around like that. That's how it goes. So the clip's at the bottom. And then we can put this piece in here. Again. Plenty of grease in. And again, as I said before, this is what I use my old grease pots up for. You know, if it's got a little bit of dirt in, well, it's not really the end of the world because it's not lubricating any... Um, bearings or anything like that or bushings it's nothing really to it's just for a bit of lube in fact that's quite clean because when I've got these old tubs I always store them upside down so they don't get dirty and there we go and now we're going to try and tap that down like that turn it we can put the screws back in. And you can see how it squidged the grease out. I'll tighten up the screws and I'll come back. Right, give them an even nip down. They don't have to be monster tight or loctited. Next thing, we're going to lube our shaft. This got quite a few comments before. Ooh. Right, so that's lubed up. We've got to put it in from the bottom. We're going to tap it. 
tap it through. There we go. We'll grab our bushes, grab our little bushes, put some Luby Loo on it, put that one in, lose the other one. Lube into there, into the housing, and pin, grease, and then just sort of wiggle it around a bit until it fits. You know when people say, oh can you just change a gearbox? or fix an oil leak. There's an awful lot more to it than meets the eye. I'm not sure if many other people would do things like this. They'd just take the gearbox out and that's it. Bob's your uncle put a clutch in. And they won't bother about things like this. But the thing is you might as well do these things all at once. There you go. Working fine. All we've got to do now is put a little bit of grease on the old gasket. I'm, I, I'm using the old gasket again for the simple reason that uh, I, well, I haven't got a new one and um, it's only just to keep the sort of water out a little bit so I'll fit this and I'll show you what else we do so the last job which you missed because I forgot to turn the camera on I just packed it full of grease make sure it works everything's working hunky dory that shaft's moving in and out so let's get it fitted and let's get it all lined up now one thing I wanted to show you before I uh, put it back on if you can remember I don't know if you can see down there, there's a there's a saw cut down there where I just put it down there with the uh, the slitting saw, so that will correspond with the mark that's on the linkage side. So we don't have to worry about where the splines go because we've already got them marked up. And of course, last job of all, put the tub the top on the tub of grease. Stop the dirt getting in. Right, we'll fit this. I hope you like it. Uh, this is going to make Land Rover a lot better, but it is a common cause of problems. Um, they never get touched. This is 1994, apparently, but I don't really know. But it's probably never had any grease on it at all. Right, let's get on with some more videos.